This episode is brought to you by PlantWave. PlantWave turns a plant's biorhythms into music. You just attach two sensors to a plant's leaves. PlantWave connects wirelessly to a mobile device running the PlantWave app, and the app has instruments on it that are built for plants to play. Check it out at plantwave.com and share it with your friends. Hey friends, I'm out here in the jungle today, and uh, this podcast was actually recorded about a year ago in a different jungle in Tulum. This was done with Eduardo Castillo. Eduardo is an artist, he's a musician. He's also a co-founder of the global experience brand called Abitas. And so if you're wondering what a global experience brand is, well, uh, you know, some people might think of it as a chain of luxury hotels, but uh, as you'll find out from this episode, it's a lot more than that. It really is an outgrowth of Eduardo's creative expression as a musician and as an artist. And he was able to build that. And now he's moving on and going even deeper into his music. So this podcast was recorded right before we did a performance in Habitas Tulum, which I will make available in the show notes. And even more cool is that I'm going to actually have the opportunity to perform with Eduardo again uh, this coming spring at South by Southwest. Well, I guess just before spring. March 16th at South by Southwest. We're going to be performing in a huge church. It's like uh, 450 people. Really excited for that. Also, I just want to say Eduardo is one of the most important people I've come across in my life. One of the things that he did with Habitas was they did these clubhouses around the world. And they had one in Venice Beach in California that I joined. And I can say about... hmm, 60 to 80 percent of my closest friends they're all from that crew that i met there including my partner who i live with now and uh, i'm traveling with here in costa rica yeah so just such an amazing guy i'm so blessed to know him and i'm excited for you to get to experience what it's like when a human is just following his art and his mode of expression and what that can lead to. This is super inspiring how simply creating music events can lead to creating a whole global experience brand. So without further ado, let's dive in with Eduardo Castillo on the Nature of Now podcast. Eduardo, thank you for joining today. (laughs) Good to have you. Good to be here, man. Yeah, man. Actually, I'm happy you're here. Yeah, it's amazing to be here in this beautiful light with the copal and in the jungle. And it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. So for those in the audience who are new to your world, can you just give a quick intro of who you are and what you do? Of course. Uh, Eduardo Castillo. Um, I am a musician um, who accidentally now has hotels. (laughs) <laughs> uh, and that's really sort of how it sums up uh, yeah, my my backgrounds in music. I I uh, studied uh, composition, studied it was a double major. I did a composition, vocal performance, uh, philosophy and religion uh, uh, studies, and then I went to pursue my career and accidentally built a career also in hospitality just to pay my way through school. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, eventually one thing led to another and the two worlds collided, music and hospitality. And here we are in Tulum at one of the Avitas. Amazing. I don't know if that's, that was, that's great. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's great. And, uh, and talk a little bit about, about Habitas. Yeah, Yeah. happily, happily. So Habitas came about through this this uh, hunger for me. I always, I always wanted to create musical experiences. I felt that that uh, I felt that in the in the circles that I was involved, that, that it lacked. Um, inspired by Peter Gabriel and his tours, inspired by Pink Floyd. You know, like these. Really, there was so much attention to a storytelling other than just the music. But like, how do we take it to another level? And it always kind of stuck with me. Um, and so I wanted to create beautiful experiences, um, and I started doing that in LA yeah, mm-hmm. in a big way. It just started really kind of growing in that in that space of not in a big way in terms of you know massive festivals and numbers, but but in a big way of like quality versus quantity kind of thing. 
Um, and, it, and it went very well. And I met my, my dear brother and, and business partner, Kafir, who was also sort of on the same path of like, well, you know, he had been, he had grown tired of Coachella and I had grown tired of Coachella. And like we had been, you know, him and I had been going to Burning Man for many years without knowing each other, but we've been going in for many years. And we had this thing where we wanted to create this extremely beautiful experience. And we really, at the end of the day, wanted to just share like well, how we wanted to live our lives, you know, mm -hmm. and how these very like peak moments of joy and bliss, you know, how do we share this with the world? Moments that we had at Burning Man and moments, you know, where, where and also building a camp at Burning Man was really fulfilling and satisfying. So one day we said, why don't we build our own Burning Man camp, but not at Burning Man. We do it in a beautiful place and different place. And, and then we maybe take it around the world and we, you know, and that sort of became Habitas and, and, and it became kind of went viral the first, after the first event because it was really special. Uh, fast forward to having an event in Mexico uh, that sells out very quickly. And then us realizing that maybe it's not just a week of, a, of, a, of an event, but maybe it's two weeks or maybe three weeks, maybe four weeks oh, maybe we need a reception and maybe we need a restaurant and oh, we have a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> that was the beginning of, uh, of Habitas. And, uh, and so we, we built the hotel as if we were building a camp. Uh, you know, I don't know if you can see much, but, but it's essentially a jungle that we very carefully placed tents in mm -hmm. um, and we built a camp, um, which is now, was, became the first Habitas hotel. Um, nowadays we have eight uh, operating all over the world uh, with obviously many more to come but the ethos stays the same the essence stays the same um, and it's that ethos is respect for nature um, a place for human connection a place for empathy for nature and to build these experiences that I had always been building before um, but that is the DNA of 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 you know, this hotel industry that all of a sudden mm. we're in, you know, and we call our home. So um, the essence is really what makes it special and the people. Yeah, definitely the people yeah. feels it, the way that you attract the right people into a place is really beautiful. I've, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not that it, 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 what we've learned is that as we're expanding, uh, you know, we were worried about finding the right people mm. and what we've re what we've learned is that because we're moving with purpose it's not just a business there is there's there's a reason why we're doing what we're doing and how we're doing it it's sort of attracting the law of attraction it's 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 attracting the people that want purpose and so mm -hmm. when we're when we land in a certain country or a certain place and there's you know, if you if you look at a list of like, like an employee list, like a or, or like a recruitment, you know, fair, and there's um, this hotel and Habitas that actually cares about human connection, actually cares about the planet, is building, it's putting their mouth, their money where their mouth is, as opposed to the other one, which potentially could just be a paycheck. Mm -hmm. Very easily, people gravitate because I believe that humans do have innately this sense of good. Mm -hmm. um, I want to believe that. Um, and we're attracting beautiful people just simply because we care about what we do. Um, and it trickles down, obviously. I mean, the founders, we're, we, we care about the people. And there's a lot of love and um, it's contagious. It's beautiful. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I really feel that in like all the interactions I have yeah. here and with you, of course, and uh, just with all the people that I, you know, that I've met through, through this network. Uh, and the servers and the housekeepers. Yeah. I mean, they're all I mean, incredible. They're just light beams. Yeah. Like it really feels, it really feels yeah, lovely. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. And one thing I noticed is like, you have, you, this, it feels like it's a true expression of your life you know, of, of, yeah. of how you live your life is this place. And, uh, I was wondering like how you found, how did you find this, this piece of land or how, how do you find these pieces of land? Cause I, one thing I notice about you is that you have 
a really deep, intimate relationship with place. Mm. Like when you perform, you're always performing in a new, you're, you're performing in these places and the performance happens once and it, it is a representation of a moment in time. Yeah. And I feel like that's something that is core to what you do. And I, I'm curious, like how, how, how do you find these places or how do these places find you or call you in? Yeah. It, with hotels, it, it, we, they have found us. Mm-hmm. Um, again, people realizing and taking note to something that's special. And, you know, if you have a big piece of land and you want to, and you're an entrepreneur and you want a business and you have a consciousness, uh, you will find something, you know, you'll try to find something that, that, that resonates with you and that aligns with you. And that's what happens. That's what happens mostly, mostly with, the, with our properties is we, we, property owners, landowners, uh, or people that know of landowners tell us you have to meet this person you have to you know and sort of these kind of again the law of attraction and 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 that alignment of why it is what we do and wh- how we do it and that's how we ended up in tulum i mean was somebody came to one of our events and and the owner came to the landowner came to our events and he he said you guys need to come see our land um because it would be a great place for an event mm. because he had been associated he, he, we weren't hotel people Mm-hmm. He was. We, he was like. I'd love for you guys to come and enjoy my land, and and we did. And and then when we said we might stay longer, he's like, never leave. <laughs> Don't ever go. Oh. You know? So yeah, that's on the hospital on the on the on the hotel side. On the on the on the music side, um, I do seek out spaces. Uh, that's mm-hmm. where where I get m- m- a little bit more granular. Um, obviously, you know the feasibility of building a hotel. There's a there's a feasibility study of building a hotel for a concert. You can pretty much do a concert anywhere as long as, you know, as long as there's a road to it. And even so, you might even take a hike to mm-hmm. one of my shows. No, um, so that's really kind of really looking into if it's an urban setting, looking into a unique setting. It could be a church. It could be a subway station. It could be you know something really interesting. Um, if it's outdoors, obviously, the more immersed in nature, the better. Um, but but I think I think what's important there is 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 that is is that the space becomes a container for not just the music, but also the message and and the call to action. Mm. So when you're in nature, and you're playing, you know, hopefully beautiful music, um, there's a there's an emotional connection that's very powerful. And, and when you're in that context and you look around and I'm able to tell the audience, take a look around and take this in right now mm. while I'm like playing this like really lush, beautiful pad and chords. And, you know, maybe there's a beautiful singer and like somebody, you know, like it's like so cinematic that it feels fake, but it's not <laughs> like pinch yourself because we are actually living this moment and this needs to be preserved. Mm. And there's then that emotional connection turns into a call to action right away, and now that and and this is how we do it, and I try to give that out in a silver platter. And like you don't even have to think about it. Here is how you can make that happen. Mm-hmm. Just by arriving to a concert, you've made it happen because you've opened yourself and you committed to purpose and 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 and, and intention. Sure. Yeah. Tell me a little <laughs> bit more about the like the impact platform you guys have created through Habitas. Yeah, we, we, we just launched something that's super exciting, which to me I think is the most, probably the most important thing that Habitas will ever do. And it's called Habitas Rise. And Habitas Rise essentially is this almost one for one kind of model that we've, we've been seeing popping up forever. Um, but it's, it's, you know, we, we, every guest that checks into our hotel for every stay, we donate $10. Then we ask the guest to donate to, to, to match it uh, at the end of their stay once they're inspired by what we've done the goal is that you know they're very inspired and ten dollars is nothing they'll say here's a hundred you know t- towards towards the cause um, but but th- and then we align ourselves with incredible organizations here in Mexico we work with underprivileged children with coral reef restoration with sustainable 
um, logging and and um, we work with water preservation for Tulum and for Bacalar for where we are in Mexico uh, and that's going to grow and grow and grow because we're actually building a fund that directly is funneled to all these organizations and with the concerts is it's amazing because the concerts <clears throat> uh, what we do with the, with the concerts is you know we have a hotel so it could be sold out we're not really interested in we're not a, we're, we're not a concert space uh, we are a hotel uh, the heartbeat of the hotel is that concert space mm -hmm. but it but the but it's not the business mm -hmm. that's the impact component like real time sure you know um, and so obviously we have Abitas Rice but with every concert we don't sell tickets tickets are contributions those contributions every single person that comes to a concert has it makes a contribution and that contribution goes directly to our causes so it's like real time happening in the moment that money goes immediately to these organizations mm. um, and there's a really beautiful sense of pride there when you have that conversation during a concert I'll have I'll talk about this and you, it's palpable how people say how people suddenly are inspired by the fact that just by going to this concert to be entertained and be inspired they're also giving back and there's a sense of pride there that's really beautiful and it's sort of this beautiful feedback loop of let's do it again let's do it again let's do it again mm -hmm. it's amazing yeah absolutely yeah i can resonate with that because when you know when you invited me down here we worked together three years ago or so and it was just like absolute yes yeah like, yeah it's just it's such a beautiful space and it attracts just beautiful people yeah and it feels great like when the, that's the first thing i said when i got here it's just like oh this feels really nice yeah you know and then just the candles and just feeling just seeing the space the way it's taken care of and I, i've even heard you talk about you know part of your shows you know the the ambiance of course is, is is really important but you even talked about like you know there it's like it's like i want to have a say in in like how the candles are lit right yeah there's this deep intention yeah uh, through every aspect of the performances yeah and so that intention for me it, it feels like it creates the space it creates the container for then this wildness or this freedom yeah. to kind of flow and that resonates a lot with me as a musician who makes music with the plants because my whole thing is creating these containers for this you know the plants to kind of just flow and um, have that expressed as something that's harmonious mm. and like, I see you doing that uh, on so many different levels or like and there's a resonance between not only you and everyone on your on the team here um mm. where, where that's that's happening in a really beautiful way yeah i i mean i use the word contagious a lot because it it, it, it you know it, everyone's everyone thrive i always i also always say that you know if we take care of each other we all thrive that's that's just how it is if we watch out for each other if we're mindful of of, of everyone else then we thrive the n never is that more important than in that setting where the stage is set, the container is set, and then anything can happen, right? And then you feed off the end, the audience, the audience feeds off you, and it's, that's why I set the, the stage in the center, is so that we can, we have sort of this like cocoon, or more, like almost the womb of, you know, of, of this experience. And it's impossible for it not to be contagious. You can see across the stage. Typically you're on, you're at a concert and you're, and you're looking at a stage. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've sort of, you know, not interested in that anymore. Yeah. Um, I'm for me personally for performance. There's a lot of artists that prefer that, but but I I, I don't just want to face, and I don't necessarily want to have this like tunnel vision where I'm not paying, where I'm not seeing what's around me. One of the things that that I'm always struck by is when I'm at a concert. That's a, that's that's beautiful and really inspiring. And we are looking at a stage. Mm. A lot of times when there's a, when it's a very emotional and powerful moment, I'd usually turn around and look at people and mm. look at the audience. And what makes it more emo most emotional for me with to almost to tears and most a lot of times actually tears is how people are reacting and mm -hmm. how people are 
are touched and you see people putting their mm. hands to their face and like or their heart or or just like closing their eyes and that connection to them is more powerful to me than the con than than the actual artist that's on stage now that obviously it's because of that artist but it's really how I'm affected by everyone else that really kind of is contagious, you know? And, and so that's why the stage is in the middle and that's why everyone's in a 360 degree setting because, you know, if the stage is in the center, I'm here, you're there, there's no way I'm not gonna see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And if you are moved and you are suddenly dancing or meditating or even laying down and looking at the stars, I'm gonna wonder why you're doing that. Mm. And I was, I'm gonna figure it out right away because of the setting and I'm going to want to go there as well. Mm. So you, I've seen people totally possessed mm -hmm. at these shows because they feel safe and because they feel that there's very powerful intention. And so I want to be part of it. You know, it's, yeah. it's incredible. <clears throat> Absolutely. I was, I was actually just sharing uh, some of the photos from our our last concert together uh, with Paola, mm. uh, your amazing production manager. And She's she, awesome. yeah, and and I was looking at them and just seeing all of those, all of those reactions, just seeing people deep in meditation, seeing people just in ecstatic dance, like all in the same, all in the same concert and without any specific prompts, like no. now we're going to do this, right? right? It's just, it just happens yeah. and it's an emergence. And it's generative and it's creative. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's it, it's it's you, you. It's we're living creativity right in the in that moment. Mm -hmm. and, you know where either before the show there was calm and peace, then all of a sudden there's like three hundred creative beings owning their creativity. Mm -hmm. Sometimes without even realizing it. And it's all from that point of the consciousness from which you're creating or that everyone yeah. is creating and the thing that uh is it true that did you study opera is that a i thing? did okay cool yeah all right yeah so um i was wondering because whenever we're, we're talking about oh how you know how the run of show will go like you always have this really beautiful uh touch for spectacle but not spectacle like in a grand mm -hmm. way but spectacle spectacle in a very powerful way where it just feels super meaningful yeah uh and i'm wondering where that came from did that come from i mean obviously you're a heart-centered human and i'm wondering like i don't know what what did did studying opera bring this out in you or what was your like childhood relationship with music and, yeah. and performance i think i think the the I think authenticity, I think, uh, would be where you can have very little and have it feel spectacular. Sure. When it's like radically honest and radically authentic. And, you know, I, I do love, you know, lighting and 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 the and the the power of fire and candles and all these things not not in in the way that like it's very spectacular but like not an extravaganza it's it's uh it's subtle and you know i i love elegance as well you mm -hmm. know and i love subtlety and elegance and 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 when you combine less is more kind of with authenticity um it's that it's it has that spectacle power you know mm -hmm. it's like it's like but at the end of the day <clears throat> the spectacle also comes from the creative influx of the audience yeah. you know when all of a sudden i can bring in a bass line and have the layers start to just kind of bubble and bubble and bubble and the pot is steaming and steaming and then it bursts and everyone bursts into you know excitement and 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 the, and the reaction to that that's the spectacle like, sure. and i all i did was take it there with emotion but but it but it it wasn't something that you know i i hired a crew to to build the stage and to it's really about we go back to what we said before it's about the people mm -hmm. and it's about how present people are 
the more present they are, the more profound that spectacle that we're call, we're you know we're kind of redefining the word that that word no, but mm -hmm. but that's where it's more spectacular. Yeah, and it's really it's really in that in that exchange of energy with people. It's that's that 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 I think. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's that's where the, the the magic is. I love that. Yeah, if, when I hear elegance with honesty, it it in a way makes me think of things as simple as the Copal smoke. Yeah, it, during a certain time of eve or late in the day, with yeah. a little bit of sunlight filtering through the leaves. <laughs> right it's the that is that moment and that is everything that moment is and honesty is really just being present with all that is happening in the yeah. moment right and it's also nature mm -hmm. you know these things happen in nature there's sure. no there's no better spectacle mm -hmm. i mean the hero we're standing right now if you just look around the lighting is beautiful coming through the trees there is nothing more in incredible than than this this space. Totally. Uh, and you know, going back to that that idea of spectacle, there like it's nature. Yeah. 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 There's this word, you know, uh, stochastic. It's no. like It basically it's like when uh, it's kind of like that phenomenon of light filtering through the leaves and the trees. It's mm -hmm. this kind of randomness that. Uh, that happens people theorize that that's when when the buddha reached enlightenment uh -huh. you know he, he, under the under the bodhi tree that really what was happening part of what was happening was that the, the sun <laughs> right. was kind of like you know that can get you in this trance, right <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah oh there's always a materialist answer to the spiritual <laughs> right <laughs> exactly uh, but yeah that's, that's a, like a that's like a 10 hour conversation <laughs> <laughs> to be continued yeah, on that one yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, I, I just love the way that you create the spaces for those, uh, those kinds of things to happen and, and Thank people. You, and, um, I can say that, uh, you know, Habitas has actually like radically, uh, influenced my life or changed my life in a lot of ways, uh, by you guys opening up that, that space that in Venice back yeah. in the day. Right. Yeah. And, um, and you know you created a space for you know artists and people to connect and uh all, most of my best friends in the world actually i met in that in that that's little incredible. house that's incredible yeah and then same what you're doing here bringing people in like i'm meeting meeting other musicians that are here and then i found out we're both friends with christopher willits who <laughs> is just like brother from another yeah uh so it's yeah it's just really really cool um, That's awesome yeah so i feel that impact not only like on the in environmental uh landscape but also in terms of uh supporting artists and and creatives that's so. incredible man that's uh, it makes me very happy and 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 also i mean what better way for for uh for us to evolve and progress than then with like mindedness, you know, I mean like then all kind of working towards the same goal. It's incredible. That's why I love Plant Wave and that's why I, it's just, it's just like anything that connects you to nature in that way where it isn't esoteric or isn't it's just it's just a moment. It's mm. just a, 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 a an exchange, you know. It's so simple. Yeah. Special. Beautiful. <clears throat> well I know we have a uh we have a uh, sound check to yeah. do soon, so I don't, I don't want to take up too much more time. Um, even though we could talk for forever, Happily. we'll do a part two yeah. at some point. At another property. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit more about yeah your experience because we worked together a few years ago, and it was it was in a different format, right? It was sure. like with a whole band. Yeah. Um, so. But yeah, just tell me a little bit about about that, what you remember from that experience, or what you remember uh, having experienced plant music, uh, yeah. with plant wave, in our previous iterations of it. It was awesome. I mean, when, when, first when I when I when I ran into you and I and I and you showed me the device, um, you know, the, I think I immediately said We're, we got to do this in the room. I think like yeah. literally like within <laughs> seconds. Totally. Um, and, uh, and the experience was amazing. I mean, the, the idea of generating 
m you know, musical atmospheres from devices connected to plants, collecting, you know, they're, I mean, it's incredible. I, I was so excited to make that happen. And that time was really nuts. And, and, and we had a lot of, I mean, we had, we had about, we, I think we had eight musicians on stage. Um, <laughs> Uh, Dave Harrington was on stage with his with his distortions, and we had violin, we had singers, we had drummers. It was wild. Yet the the devices and Plant Wave were sort of like the foundation and kind of what we held everything together. Um, because also that's how my music is. It, there's a, there's I work with a lot of drones, and I work with a lot of a lot of pads that that start taking different shapes but but it's there and so having that be um it, a life force on its own was really exciting now for this show is 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 even more exciting because now i you know that was sort of i was kind of conducting an, a, a, an orchestra a little orchestra this time just you and i and i really want to listen to the plants mm -hmm. you know uh and we have an opportunity to do that i'm super excited about it yeah, I like that there's, it sounds like there's an opportunity for more vulnerability too for sure. like with the audience yeah. in terms of just being open about what we're, what we're doing as we're performing yeah. and, and just kind of sharing in that moment. Totally, totally. It, it's almost like we, I feel like tonight's going to be a bit of a hybrid of, a, of like, a, like a talk and music and presentation and meditation and um, just... I, you know, I'm excited to have it much, be much more about um, listening. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And 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 then like you know when you listen to it and you it's all it's almost like all of a sudden they come they are alive obviously mm -hmm. the trees are alive but but it, we all of a sudden go into like um, the human realm you know like I'm performing with a living organism and but might that plant or that tree also like utter some notes by singing or, mm -hmm. you know, like all of a sudden there's like a personality, personality there and it's all being generated by, by, by the devices. I mean, uh, it's awesome. You're inspiring me to give the plant more control over things tonight. I'm yeah. actually going to uh, offload some of my workflow uh, to the plants. I was just going to have them playing all the notes and I would switch instruments and uh -huh. things and arpeggiation. Uh -huh. Might give them a couple more knobs. <laughs> so I could just hang out. That's awesome. Yeah. So we can just hang out. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so yeah, we're just like in the sit there and in, in in awe of of everything. I'm excited. Man. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what's up. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for uh, being on Nature of Now. Yeah, man. It's a and, pleasure. Yeah, man. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience? Uh, just to. Um, I feel, you know, the more I stay true to my purpose um, and pursuing that happiness that, that it brings, the more things start to unravel in front of me that are only there to validate that that's what you should be doing. It's beautiful. And, and, mm -hmm. and you know, if I could, if I could uh, share any wisdom, that would be the main, the main, the main piece of wisdom is, is to is to stay true and, and you know, is to that path um, for the good of all, really. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, the synchronicities will emerge. It's to, incredible. Yeah, I, it yeah. is absolutely incredible. And this is, you've created many a vortex on earth for those <laughs> to happen. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank yeah. you. Thank you yeah. for, for, for that and for the acknowledgement and thank you for having me. And I'm super happy that you're here with us. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much, brother. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's play. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us on the Nature of Now podcast. Now, the performance we did after this interview is also available uh, on the Plant Wave YouTube, and you can check that out. Uh, the link's in the show notes, and uh, there'll be much more of this kind of stuff because uh, Eduardo and I are going to be collaborating at South by Southwest this year, uh, March 16th, 2024, so really looking forward to doing that. 
I also really encourage you to check out Eduardo Castillo. Uh, he's also going to be in the show notes there, eduardocastillo.com. Uh, he is just working on such amazing musical projects and just has this really amazing global presence. He's doing this project called The Overview Effect, which is uh, based on that phenomenon of what happens when astronauts first view Earth from space. And they realize that we're all, you know, we're all in this together. We're all one. There's, there's nothing really to fight over here. It's uh, really about working together. And once we start to see the world like that, it really changes the way we can collaborate and work with other people. So really happy to know Eduardo. And uh, he's just such an amazing artist and such a warm presence. So really encourage you to check out his stuff. Uh, and if you like conversations like this, uh, I really encourage you to subscribe to the Nature of Now podcast on whatever platform you're listening to this that really helps me out and it helps uh helps just keep this going and helps uh helps us keep getting guests and having cool conversations so uh yeah just hit me up there and uh, if you have any guest ideas or any suggestions of, for the podcast just feel free to reach out at natureofnow.com and uh until next time uh we'll catch you all soon lots of love this episode is brought to you by PlantWave. PlantWave turns a plant's biorhythms into music. Just attach two sensors to a plant's leaves and PlantWave connects wirelessly to a mobile device running our app. And the app has instruments in it that are built for plants to play. So right now, you're hearing a flamingo lily playing this sound set, this collection of instruments that I call Event Horizon. So it kind of has like a really nice like glacial feel to it. I like it for winding down or actually just being in a in nature out in a forest with, you know, huge trees. It just helps to kind of amplify a sense of wonder for me. And a lot of people ask me, you know, why don't you have more albums out? You know, I've recorded a couple albums, but for the most part, the reason I don't record that many plant music albums is because for me, it's really about listening in the moment with a plant. And so I designed Plant Wave and the Plant Wave app to, in a way, be my albums. You have, you have endless music you have endless instruments, I guess, from me that I've designed. And then you have musicians in your home, uh, these little green friends called plants that can select every single note that you'll hear. Uh, and it will be a non-repeating symphony into eternity. So yeah, doing an album just feels less interesting to me than giving everyone the opportunity to have a deep experience of plant music at home so that's why i created plant wave and if that's something you're interested in incorporating into your life and experiencing and sharing with your friends go check out plantwave.com and uh, get one for yourself have a great day <laughs>